What's up, Internet? It is the end of day 11? Day 12? I forget which, actually. Probably should have checked before I started the video. Either way, this is going to be probably the last League Start progress-ish video I make for Delirium. Um, we have our Freezing Pulse totem character back up to level 95. Um, things have gone pretty smooth. Especially uh, since the last video I uploaded, we've made a lot of progress gear-wise. We've got a reflection back in action. Um, largely thanks to a very lucky Empower Rank 3 I had drop in a Blight map. Stream chat peer pressured me into volleying it, uh, which is probably the right call either way. And luckily it went to power, you know, Empower 4. So that was a nice injection of like 6 exalts or so. And then uh, with some other trading, you know, one of the freezing pulses that we were leveling from the start of the game. Once those finally flipped over, we got one of them hit 2120. Everything else. I think this cost me... I bought the Prophecy directly instead of just buying a shield. And I think the Prophecy was about 16 and a half at the time. Uh, then I had to go beat up Uber at Ziri to get it. Who uh, is a bit tougher now, actually, in 3.10. They've quintupled the life of all of her clones when she splits into four. Which makes that phase a little bit dicey. Um, it's still pretty manageable. I had no problems doing it, I guess. She didn't kill me or anything. But um, be a little bit careful. Because uh, positioning of your totems is a little bit hard to manage. So if your totems wind up clipping the reflect one, they'll kill themselves pretty easily. And you will have to be in that clone phase for quite a bit longer now. So... I hope you're good at dodging, because they do still deal a lot of damage. Uh, otherwise, you know, I haven't made too many gear changes except the standard swaps you make when you get into a net series reflection, which I've gone over, you know, in my 3.9 videos. We have uh, an Essence Worm with a Hatred. Um, I don't have, I'm not going to run Dual Essence Worm, I don't think, for Zealotry. Uh, we could, it's definitely an option, but I feel like, I don't like being that glass. Uh, really, you know, knocks your EHP. This would put us down to 42. And then if I... What I think I'd rather do is keep the ring and run a Pandemonious. Because uh, I think the blind will have a little bit more value than normal this league. With how dangerous the naturally spawning mirrors are. Like the natural league mechanic that's in every map. Um, blind is probably going to be a little bit more useful there. Uh, we've got the Coward's Legacy. It's pretty easy to... Throw some attribute catalyst at this one. This league, uh, league is raining catalyst compared to metamorph, as far as I can tell. Um, we switched our life flask to a panicked, since we are running the coward's legacy and consider it low life. You know, we can take advantage of the panic flask because we're always at low life, so we get the instant recovery all the time. So if you do make this swap, do try to remember to switch that. I didn't before I went and did another simulacrum run today. Um, but we still managed to actually full clear the simulacrum with no deaths, even though we got four bosses, two of which appeared on the same wave. I think it's wave 17 we had both. Um, and then we got Omniphobia two more times. Once was like wave 15 and once was wave 20. It was a pretty intense run, a few close calls, but uh, I will upload that simulacrum run uh, on the channel too. Probably tomorrow. I can't upload it for like 24 hours or something since it was streamed. But uh, otherwise, the gear is pretty much the same since I last uploaded, I think like three or four days ago. Oh, actually, there is one other change. Other than the standard changes we make for Net Series Reflection, right? We come out of that Sanctum of Thought because we don't need that anymore. Um, I've actually moved into a large cluster. I find that these large clusters are a little bit hard to get max value out of. Uh, when you don't have the Ziri setup, but when you do and you can run that Hatred Aura, the Vengeful Commander notable, right, which has the 30% increased effect of Hatred, is part of this Cold Cluster. And this notable, I think, is powerful enough alongside Blanketed Snow that a 8-point large makes a lot of sense. This gives us access to the extra Jewel Socket, which we're going to want later if we want to get a Watcher's Eye. It, it's pretty hard to get one more jewel socket. Typically, this is where our Watcher's Eye would go, but we still want to run that medium curse cluster. 
So it makes more sense here to jump into an eight point with blanketed snow and vengeful commander. I think, uh, like in a perfect world, I rolled this one myself today. Um, we tried for a while on stream, and then just like maybe 20 minutes before I started recording, I threw like 12 more alterations at this jewel and hit this one finally. But uh, this jewel is pretty rare because of blanketed snow. It feels like blanketed snow is probably the rarest like weighted notable on the cold ones. It, you can still roll it yourself. I want to say I, I didn't take more than 500 or so alts to get this with the, you know, maybe 20 regals in there when I had blanketed snow plus two jewel sockets or vengeful commander plus two jewel sockets. But ideally, we would want a fourth affix on this jewel. And it's probably going to be worth exalting this one instead of buying one, but you can keep an eye on the trade site for a jewel like this. And if you can get a fourth affix, what you would want, you can do it one of two ways. Like the second best way is to just get a third notable, probably something like disorienting display, which is 25% elemental damage, and then like a 10% chance to blind whenever you cast an elemental skill. So every time you place your totems, and maybe when your totems fire, I don't know if that skill would be inherited by your totems or not. You could also get something like prismatic heart, which is 30% damage, 10% all res, makes it a little bit easier to balance your resists. Um, but what I think you'd prefer in a, in a min-max type context would be to get 2% or 3% cast speed with cold spells, which can be on your miners. And so you get a total of either 6 or 9% cast speed, and that would actually give you more damage than having another notable, and it wouldn't take an extra skill point. So that is what was, I think is going to be optimal here. A large in an 8 point with blanketed snow, vengeful commander, two jewel sockets, and then um, the addition of 2 to 3% cast speed with cold skills. That 3% one, I say 2 to 3 because the 3% one only rolls on, I think, item level 84 or higher jewels, which are obviously going to be a lot rarer to find like a, a large 8 cold. So 2% is still better, I think than taking another notable just because it costs you an extra skill point to get the value otherwise though i'm still sticking to the curse medium with wish for death master of fear and then a three point small cluster you've got some options here for the small cluster i may drop this for blessed which i think i have one i can show you somewhere here so Blessed is 6% max life and 10% increased maximum mana. But you also get 13 Chaos res. Now the miners are mana instead of life. So I would be losing more life in exchange for more mana. But this would you know, free up your gear a little bit mana-wise too. So depending on what your life mana balance is, I think Blessed would be a really good choice. Now if you're already lopsided towards mana and you need more life, you can just take a Fettle in the life small cluster like this one because that'll give you 10% life plus 20 flat life, which winds up being a noticeable bump over holistic health. But yeah, um, this is gonna be the final update because the character is pretty much in autopilot mode at this point. Um, we do actually have a lot of Atlas progression. I haven't been keeping up as much as I've, I've meant to. We have killed Cirrus already once. Um, funnily enough, we had to fight him at 19 watchstones instead of 20 because the last Guardian, like the Redeemer, had taken up uh, in a four socket region, I think it was Glenock here, but I already had her stone from there. So it still counted for triggering Cirrus, even though we didn't get that 20th Watchstone. Um, but this is all gonna be details, right? Like at this point, we're geared to the point where Atlas progression is gonna be kind of a non-factor. Um, we've already killed him, we killed Simulacrum, full cleared at Deathless. Um, so now it's just going to be, you know, grinding for upgrades. I think from this kind of position, we do really want to get the uh, enchant from Umerlab on our boots. That's actually a very strong upgrade. Um, preferably the 10% damage pen, if you haven't killed recently, winds up being like a 5 to 6% DPS increase. Which is really nice. Uh, maybe upgrading the wand uh, in the two to three x range if we can get something with plus one cold skills or 
you know, a much larger crit strike for spells roll or something. Um, I do think, like I said, I'm going to switch probably into a Pandemonious. And then the last thing before I start considering more big ticket items will be to roll a new helmet. We're holding off on that until we get some kind of influence exalt orb, right? We want, like, redeemers or hunters or warlords so that we can roll for one of the influence pools, right? Flat damage to spells or, you know, the uh, minus nine to cold resist to nearby enemies, which they move from fossils into redeemer. I don't think I'm going to be too picky about which influence I take. Um... I'm, ho I'm just going to hope to get one from a Conqueror. Um, push come to shove, maybe we'll buy one. Uh, we'll see which ones are cheapest at the time. You'll still be able to roll those. Like, if we get a Redeemer, we'll still be able to roll that with Frigid Fossils and Pristine Fossils like we used to. Since that Cold Aura is still weighted in the Cold category, um, we just need the influence on the item. I think the only one you can't really weight with Fossils that well is Warlord. I think you could wait Elemental with the Prismatic. So we can do Prismatic Pristine. These are a little more expensive than Frigid Fossils. But I don't think you can wait the Global Crit Multi on Warlord. Which would be one of the bigger prizes, I think. Uh, I suppose one other thing we're talking about. They did post this uh, preview of the 3.10.1 patch notes, which should be either tomorrow or Friday. By the time you even see this video, it'll probably be within 24 hours. Mainly this patch seems to be aimed around improving the visibility and the tells of a lot of the delirium monsters. Um, improvements to the mist to try and improve the visibility of all the ground effects and stuff that might be below the mist. Uh, adding colored lights to monsters with on-death effects, uh, including making the um, like the homing volatiles that pop up when you walk over the little, you know, sack looking things on the ground. And they also will have a charge up before they explode. Because right now, they detonate as soon as they touch you. And, uh, if you see my simulacrum run from earlier today on stream, I was definitely not happy with that because they just sort of spawn randomly in the simulacrum instead of, you know, something you can see and avoid walking over but uh, there weren't really a lot of nerfs or buffs here. There's a few bug fixes, but this is mostly about uh, improving visibility, which I think is a good thing. Um, also, this next patch is going to have the ability to select Atlas missions uh, directly from the map device, like they showed uh, last week, which is nice. And some other bug fixes. While I do think this stuff helps, I have to say that I still feel like the naturally spawning mirrors for the League mechanic are, are still not that satisfying. Uh, they seem to be sticking to their guns on the idea that the fog should be sort of a timed element for the naturally spawning mirrors. And um, I, have, I, just, I have to say their argument for that doesn't feel very convincing. Um, the League mechanic feels a lot more satisfying right now on the orbs um, or even the simulacrum where there is no time pressure element. And you know, when you think about the things that don't feel like they're working very well still in the mirrors, the way the, con uh, the League Mechanic overlaps existing content, you know, like Betrayal or Incursion, um, these elements work perfectly with the orbs, but they still don't work that great with the naturally spawning Delirium. Um, some of them work better than they used to, right? Blight or incursion works okay although there's still a lot of pressure to like quickly look at your at your temple map and try to figure out exactly what you want to do um, but some of them still don't work very well at all right betrayal still feels terrible because that's a mechanic where you're supposed to sit and, and actually think about what you want to do with the prisoners after you defeated them it's something you just can't afford to do right now the fog does not pause once you've killed them and you're trying to figure out what to do with them. Um, works okay with Breach. I, I guess it works a little bit okay with Bestiary. It feels like... Uh, it still just doesn't feel right, though. Especially with these damn splinters that 
they've increased the drop rate of these things dramatically. And, you know, that's a good thing in terms of being able to access the simulacrum more often. I don't know why they went the route of increasing the splinter drop rate instead of reducing the stack size to create a simulacrum. It feels like that was the wrong move, and it's added even more, like, friction and frustration with the timed element of the naturally spawning delirium. Um, push come to shove, I, like, if you had to... If I had to choose right now with the state of delirium whether this league would go core or not, I'd honestly say no. Like, I... The Lee mechanic is still not in a great place for the naturally spawn. Now, if the League went core only through these orbs somehow, I'd be fine with that. Because the mechanic feels like it makes sense. The risk-reward element is much more clear, much more in your control. Uh, the Delirium overlaps with existing content perfectly when you use orbs. All of the problems and the friction... Uh, that are coming from the naturally spawning deliriums just don't exist with the orb version. It, it's straight up the better version of the league mechanic. And uh, the natural version just currently still isn't that fun because of this stuff. So I, I hope they continue to think about this because uh, I would really not want to see the current version of the naturally spawning mirrors make it core. Unless maybe it always dropped an orb. So... You'd at least only have to do it half the time or something. I don't know. But enough ranting about that. Uh, other, I mean, I'm actually enjoying the patch and the league as a whole right now quite a bit. Um, I am enjoying being able to do the simulacrum more often. Uh, the patch in general, like outside of Delirium, has been great. They've made a bunch of quality of life adjustments. The performance patch happened, and it really helped me out. It's still a little bit iffy while I'm streaming. But when I'm not streaming, it's been a huge improvement. And hopefully they can continue to tweak that and see if they can make uh, more improvements so that the game is a little bit easier to stream. It still feels like a game that's quite difficult to stream. I have a pretty powerful PC, um, and it still feels really noticeable compared to other games. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, you should expect to see that Simulacrum video tomorrow. And we still have more stuff coming with this league, right? I've got some endgame gearing videos that I will be putting together, probably for Freezing Pulse and Holy Flame this league. And then I plan to do like the leveling series with the Holy Flame Totem Guide. So that there's sort of a you know like a video accompaniment to my leveling tips stuff. And uh, after that, you know, who knows? I'm still planning to roll a couple more builds this league compared to last league, where I pretty much just played Freezing Pulse. I'm really interested in playing a, like a bow bleed build. I did manage to snag the, uh, what's it called, the Salem, this helmet from the Simulacrum, and I've heard really good things about this snipe ability when it's attached to something like Puncture, because every stage, like snipe is an ability that where you just socket any non-channeling bow skill into this helmet, and it'll turn into Snipe, which is a charge skill, sort of like uh, Scourge Arrow, if you've ever played that, where the longer you hold it down, it gains stages, and then you release it. Um, so you can do that with something like Puncture, and every stage of that ability gets like an additional 125% multiplicative damage with ailments. I think there's like a, I think it's like five stages or something. It sounds pretty fun, and it sounds like you know, exactly what you would want to improve in that kind of build. I don't think clear is going to be a problem, especially on a gladiator, right? Where you can just split arrow bleed things and they'll explode. But then you'd have this really powerful single target option. So I'm really interested in trying that, but we're going to get through uh, the rest of our Atlas progression and, you know, get our other videos and stuff done before then. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Uh, thanks again to everybody who's been coming by the stream lately, uh, been having a really great time on stream. If uh, you want to come by and you wanted me to, you know, do a gear check or you just want to see how things are going, you can find me at twitch.tv slash wallet TV. Um, or you can just jump into the Discord if you have any questions you don't see me online. I'll put a link to the Discord uh, in the description as usual. So until next time, guys. Peace.